Hi everybody, Donna Salazar here for Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. And today I'm gonna to share with you some fun stuff that you can do with the gel press. I'm gonna show you just the basics for doing some prints on the plates. And then I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of ideas for things that you can make with all of the beautiful prints that you've made afterwards. So a lot of people have asked me, well, once I have the prints, what do I do with them? And I've got a ton of ideas to share with you and hopefully you'll be inspired by them. You can use any type of acrylic paint on the plate. I'm using a kind of higher end artistic paint here with a brayer, which is just a roller on a handle. You wanna use that to get a nice even coat on your plate. I'm using the Crafters Workshop Flower Tangle stencil and brayering over that. Now I'm adding another paint. This is from Art Anthology and it's their sorbet paint. And I'm adding that over the stencil. You don't have to add paint over the stencil, but I am for this one. And I'm using one of my embossing folders to get a little bit of texture off to the side where the stencil isn't. I always use Hammer Mill Color Copy Digital Paper. It's really smooth and gives really clean prints. And this is what's called a first print. Then you remove your stencil and because there's a little bit of paint left on it, I wanted to get a little bit in that extra spot on the side. And you wanna rub the paper very smoothly, make sure it, it covers every part of the gel plate. And this is what's called a ghost print. And those are almost always my most favorite. Now I'm using a big box store brand paint that is a lot more opaque and it gives me the thick and chunky girly grunge kind of looks that I personally love the most. And I'm using the Crafters Workshop Sweet Posy stencil. And you'll notice that I did not clean off the paper on the side where I add my paint. I'm also using a bit of leather there. Anything can be used for texture on your plates. You wanna make sure you rub your paper all the way to the edges. And this is the first print. And because my paper isn't as tall as the plate is, I'm not gonna um, lose that extra bit of wonderfulness up there. So I added a piece of paper up there to get this grungy strip. And you'll see a project later on that shows how I use those grungy strips. And this is going to be the ghost print. Those always turn out to be my favorites. I love the way that that looks. And there's another little strip on the bottom that I will make sure that I grab. Now I'm using some Pebeo Studio acrylic paint and it's kind of in between. It's not completely transparent, but it's also not completely opaque as well. And you can see I've got other little bits of color that are getting in there, and those always end up being the most amazing uh, prints for me. I've got several Crafters Workshop stencils here, and now I'm adding Deco Art Media Fluid Acrylics. Now that's a very transparent and fluid paint, and I'm using my medallion embossing folder over that. And mixing the two different types of paints gives you some really interesting looks. This time I'm getting one of those um, edge prints all by itself. Not all of them turn out amazing. I wasn't real happy with that one. And this is the first print. I absolutely love the way that that turned out. And now here's my ghost print. And this, again, turned out amazing. I love the ghost prints. Now even after the ghost print, there's a lot left on the plate. So I'm gonna do a pickup print. I'm using Golden Open acrylic paint here, which is that higher end transparent, but there's a lot of other paints. Even Art Anthology works really well for that. You don't wanna add a lot of texture. I'm just using some latch hook rug canvas to get a little bit of a grid because you already have a lot of design left on the plate. And this is the pickup print. And here are some projects that I've made with my gel press prints. So first up, of course, is the layout that I made that was on the cover of the spring issue of Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. You may look at this and think, well, I don't see anything gel press. I used it for the photo mat, the little teeny bit of green that went around to bring the color into the background from the photo. So that's one simple thing that you can do that's not over the top artsy fartsy that is easy for you to work into your current projects. This one is a little bit more artsy fartsy. This is another layout that was in the spring edition of Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. 
and this bit of grungy paint down the center was what is called a pickup print. So I had a bunch of extra paint around the edges. I added some paint on top and then I picked up the print and this is what I got, all kinds of grungy goodness. And so that's a little bit more artsy fartsy way to add some of your gel press prints into your projects. Here's another fun and easy thing to do. Just die cut some of the prints that you have. Sometimes you get a really good spot and it's not good on the other side or you didn't press down hard enough. And so those are the perfect prints for you to die cut and to add to cards and stuff like that. You can also use several prints to make a journal. So this is my little bohemian style journal that just has lined paper inside. And it's got a little um, tab right here that you can slide some paper in behind so you can keep notes in there. So it's another fun and easy thing to do. If you have a special party coming up, you can cut circles out of your prints, fold them over a piece of string, and you have an instant bright and fun banner. Or if you want to get really artsy, you can stitch bind them into a book and you can add all of your favorite prints inside. You can add quotes to the pages, photos to the pages, and it can even be a really great way to have people add notes for a wedding or for a baby shower with congratulations or best wishes for the person who's going to get the book. Now I'm going to just share a project that I've done using several of my favorite prints that I've done recently and I'm going to put them onto a canvas using some Spellbinder dies. This isn't my die set, it is um, one of their label dies, but it is one of my favorite ones. I took a whole bunch of prints that I really liked and I die cut several of these shapes out of the prints and then I inked all of the edges with my mixed media inks in truffle. And what I love about this ink is that it is so soft and smooth and it stays wet so you can work with it for a really long time after you've added the ink to the edges. In fact, I have used the blender and set it aside and gone back later, sometimes days later, and been able to use the ink that is still on the blender on a project that I want just a little bit of color on the edges. I adhered the die cuts to a book page that was die cut in a larger size, but I didn't really want the edge to be this big, so I honestly didn't need to die cut the backgrounds. I could have just put a piece of paper on the back and, and cut it around the edge, but since I'd already die cut them, I went ahead and just used them and then just cut around the edge of each of the die cuts. Then I just used my finger to kind of um, wrinkle the edges. I didn't want it to be crisp and clean. I wanted it to just kind of be chunky around the edge. And then I just used paint on the back of each of the uh, die cuts and used the paint to adhere it to the canvas that I had already um, kind of painted a background for. Then I'm gonna add some of my gold pigment powder into the wet paint and it's just white acrylic paint that I had used. And I'm just adding my, um, dipping my finger in it and adding it into the paint. And I'm gonna use uh, a palette knife to add the paint to the rest of them. The first one I just kind of splotched it on, but it worked much better adding it with a palette knife. It made it a lot more even. And then I'm just using the paint around the edges, making sure that it's all the way adhered around the edges, and then adding some of the gold pigment powder here and there. So here's a close-up view of me adding one of the die cuts to the canvas. And as you can see, I'm getting really messy. I'm using my hands. I always use my hands when I'm painting. It is probably driving some of you completely bonkers, but uh, you don't have to do it this way. You can use a paintbrush or you can put gloves on, but this is the way that I like to paint. I like to feel what I'm doing. So I kind of just did the same thing for all of the die cuts until they were all added onto the canvas. Then I added some deco art fluid media onto the background with some water just to kind of add a little bit more of that teal color that I really liked. And again, I'm using my fingers, but you don't have to. 
So I just continue to blend the color into the background and then to finish it off once I was done with the blending of this background I took some brown acrylic paint and I painted shadows around each of the different die cut pieces. And this is what the finished canvas looked like. And here's a couple other views. And I liked this canvas so much it's already hanging on my wall. If you'd like to see some of the other things that I've made, you can go to my website where I've got a gallery and a whole bunch of other things. And here are the other places where you can find me online. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again next time. Bye.